It's estimated that globally over 70% of beaches are presently in recession due to the combined effects of sea level rise and also human modification of sediment transport processes. This is posing a risk to coastal property and also to the sandy beach um, communities um, and the recreational activities on beaches that we all enjoy. Um, so one of the strategies uh, for potentially protecting coastal property is to build hard structures such as seawalls, breakwaters and groins um, that help defend that land. Contrary to popular belief, sandy beaches are actually really biodiverse systems that support more phyla between the grains of sand than the world's rainforests. And so um, coastal structures might potentially impact sandy beach communities by displacing habitat, um, by causing erosion and changes in grain size on the seaward side of these structures, um, and also by impeding the natural um, movement of beaches back and forward, um, landward and seaward through time. And so my study was really interested in actually um, documenting these effects um, on a coastal erosion hotspot of New South Wales, Belongil Beach um, in northern New South Wales. And along this stretch of beach there has been um, emergency works um, whereby there is um, a whole mosaic of different approaches to coastal armouring, stretches of shoreline with rock wall, stretches of shoreline with sandbags and stretches of shoreline uh, with natural dune system um, across which we could compare I guess how how uh, these um, biota of sandy beaches differs. What we found was that where there was some kind of coastal structure, um, we saw major changes in the sandy beach biological communities. Um, this was largely due to displacement of those animals that like to live in the dune system and the high beach system, such as ghost crabs that are really important predators. Um, these uh, species were forced to build their burrows lower down on the beach uh, where conditions are suboptimal and they're influenced by um, tidal movement. Uh, for some other species, what we found is that although they could persist lower on the shore where habitat remained, um, their densities um, were actually much higher to compensate and this has influences on predator-prey interactions. And overall what we found was that the impacts of rock armouring were greater than those of sandbags because species like ghost crabs could actually still build their burrows um, in between the sandbags where sediment was retained. Our results suggest that, um, first of all, I guess the impacts of coastal structures uh, will vary depending on how they're built. And so one thing to consider is how we might better construct um, these protection items in the future so they not only protect coastal property, uh, but they also maintain sandy beach biodiversity as well. Second of all, our results actually indicated um, that the greatest impacts of these structures were seen where they were built on, lower on the beach and they displaced more habitat. Um, so if where possible we can build these uh, further up into the terrestrial environment, we will uh, minimise those impacts on the sandy beach communities. Uh, hard armouring is just uh, one potential option for protecting uh, coastal property and public beach amenity from shoreline erosion. Um, one other uh, option that's gaining considerable interest is beach nourishment and this involves placing sediment from elsewhere on the beach to extend it shoreward. I guess it helps to maintain the ecological values of beaches um, but it requires um, fairly frequent re-intervention.